Hi students, welcome to VT Chap. So today in this video, I am going to explain about a component level design. So in the previous video, I explained about uh, these two topics that is uh, what is a component and uh, designing class based component. So in this video, I am going to try to cover uh, these remaining topics. So those are nothing but conducting component level design and then component level design for web apps. After that, designing traditional components and finally, we are going to discuss about component based development. And now the first topic uh, about this is conducting component level design. So what is exactly uh, the component level design? Uh, what exactly happening in the design process? So basically, uh, what is the design process when you are developing any kind of a software project? So initially you will take some information. So information is nothing but you will take uh, the problem domain from the customer. So based on that information, you are going to prepare a requirement and then those requirements will be uh, modeled as the architectural design. So that design will be the main uh, feature for developing and coding purpose this is the final uh, stage of the development process. So that is the actual process in the software development. So we have some uh, steps to follow when you are uh, designing a component level design. So what are the steps we will see here? The first one you can see identify all design classes that corresponds to the problem domain. So before going further, that means whenever you are going to the coding stage, so you have to identify what are the requirements you have. So what are the classes you require? So all these things you have to finalize at the initial stage. The second step is identify all design classes that corresponds to the infrastructure domain. So this is external to the software project. So when uh, when designing any, any kind of software project, so we have some internal things like uh, software uh, developers, the staff we need to so the infrastructures we require for developing all these software things. So that is also we need to find out. So that is external to the software project. So that is why in the second step, you need to find out the infrastructure, whatever infrastructure you require for that. And in the third step, you have to elaborate all design classes that are not acquired as reusable components. So basically uh, present uh, situation about a uh, software development is we are focusing on a reusing purpose. So whatever the component or whatever the class you are going to design. So uh, keeping in your mind that we are going to use this particular component or class in the future purposes. But some classes, some components are not at all useful for future uses. So you need to identify those classes in the third step. Okay. And in the fourth step, simply uh, specify message details when classes or components collaborate. So you need to specify messages when both the classes or components are collaborating with each other. Nothing but you can see the diagram here. So you have a print job. So this is a print job. Whenever you are sending information to the other class like uh, so print job means it is going to send the job to the printer. So once the printer is accepting the job, if it is any, any other jobs are already in the queue, so we need to wait for some time. So that is why it is uh, giving the message. So that is nothing but submitting the job to the job queue. Likewise, you can see the work order. So build job here. So this kind of uh, message passing is you have to mention while communicating with the class. Next step is identify appropriate interfaces for each component. So for any component, it will be having a number of classes. So that is why you need to identify a separate interface for each and every component, whatever you listed. And next step, elaborate all attributes and define data types and data structures required to implement them. So you need to elaborate all the requirements. What are the data structures you required? What is the data you required for that particular one? So attributes are nothing but it will be focused on the class. So the class is going to have a class name, attributes and then operations. So here you need to focus on attribute section in this step. And next one, describe processing flow with each operation in detail. So processing flow should be maintain so how the data is uh, uh, forwarded to the next steps and what is the process steps required 
so those kinds of things will be identified in this step and next one here describe persistent data sources like uh, databases and files and identify the classes required to manage all these databases and files okay and in step 5 develop and elaborate behavioral representations for a class or a component so how you are going to do this behavioral classes or behavioral representation of any component you will be having some behavioral diagrams like sequence diagram is there so that is the best suitable uh, diagram for representing these kind of things by using those diagrams you can represent what are the behavioral things you have and next one elaborate deployment diagrams to provide additional implementation details so like deployment diagrams are nothing but you can see you will be having uh, some cubes like uh, it will be drawn like this this is nothing but a deployment so for example when you are uh, representing when you are going to represent anything you have to represent the final output as like this so in the deployment diagram so how it will be like this so this is a one deployment and another one i am taking like this so this is for atm example i am telling okay so this third one you have uh, like this so this component name is customer right so customer is interacting with the atm machine and then uh, this atm machine is going to interact in the background with the database that is the bank website or nothing but the database and again after completion of the any transaction it is going to give the message to the customer like this so this kind of representation of data is very much important in this step okay and next step seven you are going to refactor every component level design representation and always consider alternatives so whatever you have done in the previous sections you need to refactor all those things so what are the best ways to address any particular problem so that kind of refactoring is very important so you need to do that in every alternative sections okay and next topic is component level design for web apps okay so how we are going to design a components for web applications here initially we are going to talk about uh, this particular thing so what is a web component so web app component means generally you can see any kind of websites or applications so mobile apps so how they are going to be designed so every app or application or website is going to provide some kind of functionality or some kind of data you need to process so that is the main approach you can see the first first point you can see here a well-defined cohesive function that manipulates content or provides computational or data processing for an end user so that is the main aim of any web application or you have another definition for this a cohesive package of content for functionality that provides end user with some required capability so it is going to give you the end user for doing some any kind of uh, things like you can see you are observing all the e-commerce websites so what is the data that is available what is the content that is available over there so the content will be like this you will be having a number of products so those products will be in a categorized manner okay and then so that is the content so what is the functionality of the user he can do he is going to uh, browse all the products and whatever the products he required he is going to select that particular product and in the, and then he is going to order that one finally he will get the order so that is a functionality so that is the main uh, behavior of uh, this particular web app component okay and next so content design for component level so how you are going to design the content for web apps so here the content design at the component level focuses on content objects what are the objects we require and the manner in which they may be packaged so you are going to package all those objects so and then for presentation to a web app end user 
so finally whatever the thing you are going to do so the end user should be very uh, easy to understand easy to operate the application so that kind of uh, procedure we need to so we can uh, design the content for the end user like this focusing on the objects and uh, packaging all the objects related objects in a one particular way okay and next functional design at the component level so here the web app functionality is delivered as a series of components developed in parallel with the information architecture to ensure cons so as i said in the previous example like e-commerce websites so what is the functionality of a user what can he can do so i'll take the example of a social a website each and every user is going to interact with that so even normal person non-educated person also using the uh, whatsapp facebook instagram all these kinds of things so why because it is very easy to use the functionality is very easy for them to use that is why so we can design that kind of environment to the end user and next uh, final topic in this video is designing traditional components so up to now we discussed about object oriented components but this slide is going to focus on the traditional components design okay so here there is an approach for designing this uh, traditional components that is called you will be having a three steps in designing the traditional components so first one will be sequence and then the condition and then the repetition of the component you can see the each and every one clearly first one sequence it is going to implement processing steps that are essential in the specification of any algorithm so whatever the thing you want to represent so that should be represented in a sequential manner okay and then so the condition so what are the conditions required so nothing but provides facility for selecting processing based on some logical occurrence okay so conditional probability will be there in that so you are going to design like that and then the final one is a repetition allows for looping so this is a way of uh, designing the traditional components Thank you.